so I, I assume I'm live. I'll, I'll start talking. Hey, Jordan, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that. And as a lead in, I was just going to give a little bit of my background. I've been with SailPoint for Oh, a little over seven years. Um, but in the identity space or what we call the identity security space now, we used to call it, gosh, back in the day, it was user management. For those of you that have been around since, oh, the, the late 90s, early 2000s, when we talked about this as user, user management. So now identity governance, identity security, whatever you want to call it. Um, but <laughs> you talked, Jordan, you talked about developer tools. Uh, when I first started uh, as a developer in the late 80s, good God, I'm that old, um, <laughs> de developer tools were uh, not a thing, right? So we, we started adding those in the 90s, but uh, it wasn't, uh, wasn't really good. So the ones that we have now are, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot different, a lot better. Um, you know, just seeing things that we have these days. So today we're going to talk about what I like to call multinomial states. I'm uh, a little bit more information on me. I'm a uh, computer science degree, but my other uh, kind of a joint degree is in math. So um, I like one of my friends, uh, Dana Reed, I'm sure you guys know him here at uh, SailPoint. Years ago, I told him my favorite subject in college was uh, a class on Oh, non-Euclidean geometry. I still have the book. It's back here behind me on my bookshelf. But, um, you know, non-Euclidean geometry is basically this study that says that parallel lines intersect at some point. So it was, and he's like, don't ever tell anybody that again, but here we go. I'm, I'm telling it again. Um, oh, okay. Something came up. Anyway, um, so I'm telling that I'm a math major. I'm a math guy. So that's why I use multinomial. Polynomial would be another one. Um, you know, lots of different ways that you can talk about this. I've, I've been involved in the developer days as much as I could over the last two days. And I've seen a lot of stuff on uh, higher education. I saw one on, you know, doing uh, matching of identities. That's always a, an issue in higher education. I've worked in higher education for probably the last eight or 10 years, something like that, even going back to uh, days at Sun Microsystems in the mid 2000s. So out of experience working on higher education issues, one thing that we always come in, up with is this idea of multiple life cycle states. So let me get this. So what are we talking about today? What are we going to chat about? Having many affiliations, what I like to, to talk about is affiliations instead of uh, life cycle state or some people call them um, personas. I don't really like, <laughs> uh, thanks, Wim. Uh, it, I don't really like the idea of multiple uh, personas right? Because to me, that means a lot more than an affiliation, right? When you have a, a persona, that means it's a different, totally a different identity, um, you know, and something that's totally different than, um, than what I'm talking about today. Today, we're talking about multiple affiliations. And in a higher ed space, it's things like, um, you know, I'm a student, I'm faculty, I'm staff, I'm a, a tenured professor, I'm a visiting professor, I'm a VIP, I'm a library patron, you know, lots of different affiliations that I could, a, a parent, a student, right? I could be both of those at the same time if I have a child that's going to the same university that I'm going to, you know, back to school comes to mind. Um, Rodney Dangerfield reference there for you, you that, that like that movie. Um, but, you know, having multiple affiliations with a, a university or with an institution, it doesn't have to be a university, is what we're talking about. Each having its own state, right? So that, that's where we run into problems with, the, with just having a life cycle state. It's really a, a single nomial, right? It, it's, it's only you have multiple, um, multiple life cycle states that you can have, but you can only have one at a time. Right. So I could I could come up with a scenario that has a life cycle to stay that student, student worker, student faculty. But there's so many combinations of that that would be hard to maintain and hard to put in there. Right. So that's where I come up with this idea of multiple affiliations, the multinomial state. And then we'll also talk about 
uh, being able to go back in time. This was a use case that I had from a uh, potential customer um, where they wanted to see in identity now being able to go back in time, right? We can't reset the internet clock. Wish we could, but it, it's a little difficult to do that. Some people may get a little angry at us if we went in and reset the clock for all identity now tenants. So that would be a little tough to do. I'm sure we could figure out how to do that. Um, but, you know, um, being able to go um, back and, um, you know, do things, have some retroactive history. They wanted to see 30 days. So you retain, you may leave as a student. We'll get into there as, as we go through this, but you may leave as a student or a student worker and they wanted to retain that for 30 days, right? And then, you know, have that. So, so we'll go through it and talk about that as we go through this. So I've basically hit on this, um, you know, basically the idea is to have, these affiliations, personas, whatever you want to call them, have multiple affiliations with a uh, university or with an institution. Go through there, and then you know we got to we got to throw in a Back to the Future picture in there. You always have to have that if you're talking about time machines. Um, you know, it kind of like if you guys are, are familiar with Identity IQ, you had the time machine, right? and I've heard that that's going away. I hope it doesn't, but it's a great tool for for me as a as a SE. Um, presenting and showing things. I love that tool because you can you can bounce forward, you can bounce back, you can do all those kind of things. So a um, little bit different in the identity and house space, but we'll show a little bit of that. Uh, first, let's let's define for you, you math geeks. I see in the uh, Slack or in the chat there. There's uh, you know some people saying plus one. Angelo saying plus one for math. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a math geek. So, my, but my wife always bust me on not being able to add, right? So <laughs> it, it's, you know, being able to do simple math is always tough, but doing uh, hard math is the, the where I, I thrive. But uh, just a little example of what a binomial or what a multinomial, multinomial uh, experiment may be. So you're rolling the dice, so there's six possibilities, right? Um, you could have any of those, but then a, a binomial would be, you know, three is success, success, everything else is a failure. So I have that, you know, one or two, but having the, you know, being able to have six different uh, results at one time, right? And what's the probability of those, all that kind of good stuff is what that's all about, right? And a little math down there, I just grabbed that screenshot to kind of show, um, show that, but it really relates to this, right? So you have these idea of a user affiliation in higher education, there's always this schema, of what we call the edgy person affiliations. My colleagues always give me a hard time. Uh, I'm always talking about this, the edgy person affiliations and primary affiliation and going through and calculating those, right? How do we go through and understand when we have, you know, these different, um, affiliations that you may have, how do we go through and calculate that so that you can have the proper representation of a user, right? And understand they may be student, faculty, staff, alumni, affiliate, library, walk-in, patron, whatever you want to call them, they could have those all at the same time. So kind of this, uh, I, uh, my colleague Alex put this together for me, but this basically sale point university, right? So how do you transition through your life cycle states? Right, you're pre-admissions. You're a, you're you apply to the university. You're a student. You get accepted. You pay your money. That's the critical thing I always find with universities is once you pay your money, then you became become a student. So it's always that that monetary value, right? And then, um, and then the, the student may become a worker, right? They may take a part-time position. That's what we'll see today. This is kind of the flow that we'll see today. Um, you know, I already have a user in there. We'll see them become a student, a student worker. You know, they, and then they leave their student, their part-time position, but that needs to be there for 30 days, right? So that's going to stay. I talked about that a little bit. So we're going to keep that. They become alumni, graduate student, faculty. I don't know if we'll get all the way through it. It's a lot of, uh, you know, bringing in information. It's all flat files, so it makes it a lot quicker from a demo perspective, but just kind of getting in here and looking at this. So how do we calculate this? And we saw a little bit of this 
on the previous um, discussion today in the transforms, talking about transforms and going through, um, you know, how to, um, you know, how to calculate a, an affiliation. How do we calculate these edgy person affiliations and the primary affiliation and going through there and saying, hey, how do we do all this stuff? The way that we chose to do it, Dana and I, years ago, is to go through and um, basically use this pipe delimited string, right? So we did this, gosh, when we first started with Identity Now and higher ed, higher ed demos, um, coming up with this. So we came up with this idea of concatenating together a string and looking into, uh, you know, the faculty uh, authoritative source and saying, hey, do, do they have a faculty like you're seeing on the screenshot here? Um, if they don't, don't put it in there. But you get this this big pipe delimited string that says student current, staff current, whatever it may have. And then also going through through a transform and calculating their, you know, their primary affiliation. So let's go look at that information again and say, okay, of all those things that are in there, what's their primary? What do, what do we primarily want to affect with them? Um, right. And being able to calculate that information all through transform scripts, right. Being able to go through and then putting that into the membership criteria. We saw this on the last one, being able to have the command line interface to, um, you know, be able to update this and do changes in here. But really in here, in, in my little demo environment, I set it up to say, if you have the, you know, edgy person affiliation, if it contains student worker as an example, and your status from the um, PeopleSoft environment uh, equals inactive, right? So this is kind of that intermediary right? We're going to get this for a little while for 30 days kind of thing. So that's what this one's all about. So um, going through and understanding what criteria you should have, what, what should be in there, right? This kind of shows another little uh, picture of that, right? To create that pipeline, to, to, the pipe delimited string for the affiliations, right? Showing all that information. So uh, so looking back in time, how do we go about doing that? And really the way that I implemented that with a, with Wim's help, I know he's on here, so shout out to Wim, uh, helping me uh, do this date compare and figuring out, hey, let's go back in time and, and figure out, do some date math within the uh, transform to use this, this end date you'll see there, right? This is an old one. Um, uh, I may have to look at my dates. I don't know if I updated them, but it's basically going through and saying, Hey, are you 30 days? If you are, then put in student worker. If you're within 30 days, if you're with, you know, beyond 30 days, then put in nothing, right? Have a, have a space in the, um, the negative condition, right? So that we don't put that in there. Um, and that, that's the way I did it within here so that we could go through and that's calculated every day. Right. So that we spin through those. Um, and I know some of that's changing. So I may have to look at my math on here, no pun intended, to make sure that, um, you know, everything still works. But being able to go through and, and understand, you know, um, where that that information may be and how we can do that calculation. But, you know, every, right now, every morning, um, that information we spin through the transforms and recalculate um, all the the settings and all your your uh, transform values. Right. So um, I think that's that's still going to uh, be happening, still going to go through that. So. All right. So let's see this. Any there's no questions. I don't see anything in the chat, so nothing in there. So we've got quite a bit of time, so it's not going to take me this long to go through the um, through the demo, right? So if you guys have questions, we can get in there and see it. But let's get into our, our environment here. I'll just spin over to here. So this is my environment. Hopefully everybody's seeing that okay. Looks like you are. Um, you know, I can get in here as an admin. Let's go take a look at our user here, right? I already have him brought in. Uh, Randy Barnes is who we're going to pick on today. And we can see that he's got, um, you know, some information here. We brought him in as a prospective student, right? So we see the 
edgy person affiliations here. And it's just pipe, like it talked about the pipe delimited string saying perspective student. And we've gone through and said, Hey, that means, um, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Justin, I just saw your, your comment. Um, we'll have to look at that. I, I know they added into the, into the transforms, a label where you can say, um, you know, process this daily, right? So it's like this this tag. Um, so maybe that's a part of it with the, you know, getting rid of the daily refreshes and being able to say, yeah, but this one, I this transform, I want you to run daily. Um, so hopefully that that's going to be a part of that. I'll, I'll talk to the folks about that and see if that's going to be a part of it. But I would assume so. Um, so for this guy, you know, perspective student, we we went through. We could take a look at at the uh, transform here. Uh, you know, for students, as an example, the mappings, right? So we see the transforms here, edu person affiliations and, and the primary affiliation. If I jump over here to Visual Studio Code, right? So you can see in here, get edu person affiliations. Basically, what I'm doing is just going through and saying, hey, uh, let's see if I can push that over. No. Um, you know, building out this pipe delimited string. So going through, doing the date compares, doing the comparisons and saying, hey, uh, where are, where does this person have any, um, any accounts, right? Where do they have, and you can see I'm putting that pipe in there. Probably could do that a different way. Like I said, we did this years ago and having revisited uh, updating this, probably a better way to go about doing this, this string, but you know, pipe seems to work. Um, so going through and saying, hey, are you a graduate? Can we find you in the alumni source as an example? Are you a you know graduate in here? Are you a future uh, faculty future? Right? What what are your, all your different settings? So building up this multinomial state of a user, right? So going through calculating all this information and saying, where does this user exist? Where where do we have information about them? You know, what can we do about um, this user, right? And going through and understanding where they are, okay? And just a long list of building that up. And then the EduPerson primary affiliation, right? Looking into there, uh, we just calculate that same kind of information and then get down here and have a table that says, hey, we're going to change you know, change some defaults, right? You know, if you're student current, then it's student, right? And then go through and figure out, you know, which what's your primary affiliation and grab that first valid, right? So we've grabbed the first valid. So you put those in the correct order, you get the primary affiliation the correct way, right? All that kind of good stuff. Okay. Jumping back over to here, we've got our user. So let's go in here. And the first thing we're going to do is as the student, right? We've got our PeopleSoft Campus Solutions here. So we're going to go into here and do an aggregation, right? So we have our, our accounts, our four accounts. You see Randy Barnes in there. We're going to import some data, right? And I've got... Oh, in here, sorry, these were supposed to be already there. Student files, we've got these. Let's change the name so you can see when I did the demo, you know, we're going to go through quite a few of these. Um, so student information system, we're going to bring in now that he's going to transition to be a student, cur current student, right? So we're bringing that information in. Again, we'll continue to pick on our, our favorite guy here, Randy Barnes. See his changes. He's still from students. Right, so now he's student current, still student, right? So we see the changes on that user, um, changes to them. We also see roles that were added, right? So that that criteria came into play. We get to the student current. We look at, you know, any details on that. We can see information, all the identities that are in there, the access profiles. So they get a student current um, in, in Active Directory, get an AD account. Right, all that kind of good stuff. So we went out there and, and set them up properly. Um, if we look at that identity, right, if we look at his accounts and get back into here, if we look at Active Directory as an example, now we've gone out and provisioned this user and put some, you know, 
some entitlements in for that user, his student current. So that, that kind of shows that I'm looking at the edgy person affiliations to grab what roles they should get, what sh they should be assigned. And then the typical just regular identity now processing takes over and says, okay, based upon the role assignment, you get this, these entitlements, right? So going through and seeing all that. Um, and then, so he came in, we get the affiliation, right? So now we'll go and add him as a student worker, right? So going through that life cycle state, and now he's coming in from HCM, right? So we're going to add, the, you know, we, we don't have him in there as a student worker right now. So we're going to import the human resources current, Right, so bring that in. We do the correlation, the matching. That that discussion yesterday morning was awesome on that. Right, going through and understanding, you know, all the uh, different permutations and how we can do matching and all that kind of good stuff. So all that would happen right now. Um, we did it, you know, in here demo environments. So made it a little bit different, but now we see student worker, student current. Right, still student. Right? So our affiliation, our primary affiliation remains there. We remain as the student, um, but have those different affiliations. And because of that, you can see different roles got assigned, right? So now we've got the student worker role, right? So having those come in, having different uh, roles assigned, you know, now we've got the student worker, you know, student current, VPN, and all that kind of good stuff gets added into there. Um, we could go in and edit that and take a look at it for the the assignment. So we can see that a cri criteria, right, equals active, all that kind of good stuff. So we see the criteria for what we have for a user. Right? So being able to see all the uh, details, the information about a user, what they have. We can see all the activity that's going on. Oh, I guess we got some issues in Azure AD. Yeah, I keep using the same users over, so that's what that's probably an issue, you know, it's saying, Hey, there's, there's somebody out here already, that kind of stuff, but that's not our, our part of our demo today. It's more about, you know, setting the user up and all that kind of uh, configuration. So um, next step in our little life cycle, if we're back to there, right. Kind of show that. Doo, doo, doo. It's over here. So we had that little life cycle, you know, transition. So we're kind of here. So you're going to leave part-time position. So they're going to leave, but we need to keep them there for a, a little bit of time. So that's what we're going to see right now is keeping that user kind of that, that um, going back in time. So as we come in here, the HCM, again, it's from the, the, um, the worker perspective. So we'll import a file in there, right? So inactive for 15 days and I, Hopefully this is going to work. I, I don't know if I went and set up my dates properly. They're probably wrong. Um, let's let's go. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. We'll, we'll bring it in there. They're probably wrong. You know, you got to go adjust the dates and all that kind of good stuff. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you guys get it, I think. Being able to show this, uh, right? So the accounts, identities, we can go look at Randy here, see what's going on with him. Right. So he lost the student worker. So obviously it was it was beyond the date. Let's go see if we can fix that. Let's open that. In here. Yeah. So we went too far. Let's see, do some simple math. 15 days ago, today's what, the 10th? So, 226, that's within 15 days. Three, oops, wrong person. I don't know if that's gonna work. Not worth doing it during a live demo. Probably mess myself up more than I, than I care to do. So, um, you know, basically the idea with that was you come into here, you'll see those 15 days we would change to a role. So let's go take a look at that role. Oops. Wrong place. Um, 
you know, where we've got this staff current hold, student worker hold, 30 day hold. So basically the idea with that is we're just going to have the, uh, the assignment be, yeah, so they have this student worker still. So my, um, my transformation would go through and calculate that it's within the 30 days, right? So go through and do that calculation and say, yep, it's within 30 days. So retain that, right? Retain the, the student worker value in the EduPerson affiliations and maybe set the, you know, the, the status coming in from PeopleSoft would be inactive. So we would assign this. It may have the same, um, you know, access that we're defining, right? You get the student worker, excuse me, from an access profile perspective, but your assignment would be different, right? So then when we transition to the later, the 30 days, then we don't apply the student worker. There's still an inactive state from the uh, PeopleSoft environment, right? But but they would lose it because of this, because the student act, student worker would get removed, which is what we saw. Right. So we kind of bounce through that. And if we go back to Randy here, we can see, you know, we removed the student worker from his list of affiliations. So that's why he no longer got that student worker account. Right. So being able to go back in time, um, being able to do that, that kind of evaluation. Jump back over here. There's another one where. HCM more than 30 days, right? So if we uh, import that, right, then we'll see him go away again, right? It basically will show the same thing. Um, he'll still be there, but we remove that information. Then we go back to the um, To the campus solution, the, the student information system, and maybe we bring that import the data in from that from there. We can kind of see, you know, you guys get the idea here. Um, you know, the current student inactive for 13 day, 15 days, 30, transition to an alumni, you know, all those kind of good things are going to happen as we go through this, right? And have those different um different dates and all that kind of good stuff and, and move back in time and see those calculations happen. Right. Any questions about that? I know it, kind of those dates messed me up, but um, any questions about that? You want on there, let's get back. I'm trying to get my screen set up properly. There we go. Um, so Angelo, if you have affiliation, student, student worker, then you have to be careful about using membership criteria attribute contained student. Yes, you are correct. Right. So you do have to be, uh, you have to put in student worker because the contains for students, if you put in contained student, um, then you would only have, uh, you, you would meet, you would meet on multiple criteria, right? So you, everything would meet because you would have student in the string. It's just looking at, right? When you say contains in identity now, it's just looking at the, um, uh, the, the whole string, right? So if it contains it in the, anywhere in there, then it would, um, you know, have that, you would meet that criteria. So you are absolutely correct. So you could put in the pipes as well. Um, yeah, so to make sure that you're only hitting the affiliations that you care about, right? Student worker works, student current, because you're putting in the student dash current and the student dash worker, right? So all that works. Sorry, my hands are in the way there. I'm Italian, half Italian, so I talk with my hands. Um, and... Uh, yeah, but you are correct to be truly, uh, you know, if you're in the production type world where you want to make sure that it's only meeting these values, then you would put in the, um, the, the exact match. And then you could put in, I've dabbled in this, I've thought about it, I haven't done it yet. You could put in just the pipe delimited string that says they have no affiliations, right? If you had a string of 12 pipes, um, then you would um, not have the, uh, you know, zero affiliations. 
Um, and so you could process on that. You could have some, some processing uh, invoked around that as well. Um, and I'm not sure of first name, but there was a question. Can you show how you calculated primary position again? Yeah, sure. Let's jump over to there. Uh, affiliation, yeah. So this is the primary affiliation, right? It, it's the same logic up here, right? So the, the first part, of, and this is a first valid, right? I'm kind of spinning fast. Uh, hopefully that's keeping up with me. It's a first valid type, right? So all of this in this block up above is going to do the first one valid. So whenever I find um, the first one that meets the criteria, so in here I'm doing graduate first. I have no idea why I did graduate first. I'm sure it was a um, uh, some kind of, uh, sure it was a requirement somewhere along the line that said graduate was most important, then faculty, then staff, then student. Um, I've got two student currents, so that's probably some bad code on my part. Um, graduate again, that's coming from a different uh, source. Right. So future, then faculty, future, student, future. So we're going to look for all these different uh, affiliations and each one has their own. Each edu each source has its own edu person affiliation. I did it that way in my demo just to make my life easier. Um, but you could have different attributes, different sources that mean different things coming from or different attributes from different sources that mean different things, right? And you would handle that here in, um, in the transform script uh, and be able to go through and understand, you know, where your primary affiliation. And since it's a first valid, the first one we hit is going to skip down to here. And then we go into this table just to convert that and make it a, a better looking. So instead of having these values, it's, it just converts from student current to student or affiliated worker to affiliate. Um, I did learn just FYI, when you're doing this, that you definitely want to have a default down here because things can re go really bad in your, in your testing and your development environment. If you don't have that in there, then it messes stuff up and your, your transforms no longer work. All right. Um, so the Davius Dave, um, where it gets more complicated student workers. Yes. So you can have all, yeah, I love your, your emoji on the end there. Yes, absolutely. And you can get crazy with these. Um, you know, this is our demo environment. So I could see where you would have a much bigger transform script. You know, I've probably got 10 different ones. I could see where you would have a lot of these. Um, and then uh, do, do, do entitlements that are read only, but only for specific users. Yeah. So you could use tags within there. Um, uh, you know, and start, I haven't played too much with tags, but that, that would be a good use for those to be able to say, um, you know, some entitlements are read only that kind of stuff. There was a question where did the date logic plug in, get plugged in that was in here. Let me open that back up. So within the um, the transform, right? So I have this conditional transform. So I'm checking, and this is a cool thing. I learned this doing this. Wim taught me this, actually. Thank you, Wim, um, to go through and the expression. So I can have an expression, and that's actually down here where it's going to go through. Do, do, do. It's actually here, and it's going to say first valid um either a date or null, right? So give me the or the, the the primary affiliation. Give me the primary affiliation, or if there isn't anything, then give me the null. And then I'm going to check that here against if that equals staff current, right? So if I'm staff current, then I'm going to go through and look at some date compare. This one's actually doing, um, you know, I'm going to grab the end date from the PeopleSoft environment, do a check against, uh, you know, make sure that it's a, a valid date, right? That's what this is doing is returning this date, a date, very future date, if this date is not valid. And then it's going to, try, you know, make that a correct format, do the formatting and compare that to 30 days ago, right? So it's going to do that 
grab that first date, make sure it's all valid, make sure it looks right, and then do the date math. If it's greater than 30 days, then or reverse logic here, that messed me up for a while. And um, put in staff current. If, it, if it's within 30 days, if it's not, then return nothing, right? So that's kind of the, and the staff, student workers up here, right? Doing that same math of saying, student worker, are you a student worker? If you are, then look at that date, do a date comparison for 30 days from right now. If it matches, then put in student worker. If not, then put in the, the negative condition puts in a blank, right? So, um, Uh, can you confirm that all these sources have the same primary key for these identities? Yes. So, Robert, I was uh, <laughs> I uh, made my life easier. So I did that. I made all the the primary keys so that you know I'm bringing them all in from flat files. I made them all so I didn't have to deal with um, the idea of you know correlation and correlating on other ideas. That what that wasn't the use case. It was more on this uh, of understanding what your primary affiliations are, but you do have to be concerned with that. Um, let's see, some others are coming in here. Return the portion of ADM schedule. Yeah. So great, thanks, Kirby. So that the the transforms will still um, uh, be able to uh, so will still happen, right? So great, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. So my uh, my awesome code here will continue to work. That, that's a joke. Just kidding. Any other questions? Did I miss anything in here? Uh, Phil, you asked, what's the highest ranking identity profile priority? Um, I, I'm not sure if that's, I, I didn't deal with that because I, I just went through and all of the, tra each um, application, so if we jump back over to here, each application, each source has its own, right? If I look at the schema, and it, it was a, uh, I have a build map rule on the source that says, hey, go through and calculate. So each each source has a edgy person affiliation and a primary affiliation, right? So each one has it. Um, in in this environment, I was able to do that. I just put them into the um, into the CSV files. Um, but in our other demo environment, basically, when we're reading in from our HR system, we go through and calculate what the um, what the edgy person affiliation would be, right? So there's a build map rule on the orange HR is our one in our demo environments. Um, so we go through and calculate what the edgy person affiliation would be, um, and then plug it into that value in the in the uh, schema. Right, so you can extend the schema, put in an edgy person affiliation, and uh, and then calculate that value and stick it back in there with a build map rule. Okay. Any other questions? We got a few more minutes here. And thanks, <laughs> thanks, Dave. I thought it was pretty cool. That's why when when I saw the developer days come out, I was like, "Hey, this is a you know an interesting topic, something we we show in our um, our higher ed demos." Um, but it was a this one was a little unique um, when we had, we were doing a proof of concept for a higher ed customer and going through and doing the whole date calculation and all that kind of good stuff. All right. Without any others, we'll go ahead and um, and end this. I see Kirby. You put out a is that a invite? No, oh, scheduled thirty minutes. Cool. Yeah, I, I record that. I would love to see that as well.
All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hopefully this was, uh, you know, a value. Uh, if you have any questions, Cullen.landrum at salepoint.com, reach out to me, um, you know, go out to uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn with me, whatever you want to do. Let's chat.